Hey, all right, cracking, man. Good man. Hey man, I think that's what I did. Yeah, I think that's what I did wrong, man. I think I um I had the live a little bit wrong, but we here. That's what's up, man. Hey, good to be here, man. Back on that's the right, man. Radio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We back live and direct, man. I gotta build the catalog somehow yeah. because um blog talk been down for the past week and a half, so I figured, yo. Got to take it to the live no, sometimes. You got to do different outlets. Right, right. But, I feel yes, that. sir, man. Good to have you on, man, for episode 593, man. We put in that work almost on the road to 600. Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And you've been, and you've actually been with us on the journey since the beginning, man. Yeah. Like, we go back probably like 2015, 2016. Yeah, yeah 2015 when I was with One Hood. Back then, man. When I was riding with Havoc, the Brian Son and One Hood Entertainment. Yeah. So people don't understand. We got the track record, man. We got, shoot, we got episodes already in the chamber. Yeah. That part. That part. And the grind don't stop, man. We keep it rolling, man, all the time, man. You feel me? Man, sure, man. 23 was crazy for, you know, as far as my music coming out and shit, man. You know, I had to do it. A little change up on some shit, you know what I'm saying? Started a new label, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, brought down the roof on the O, you know. A lot of a lot of my my real loyal ones stayed with me riding, you know what I'm saying? So we we regrouped and we formed uh, the Pipeline Coalition. So ain't nothing changed but the name, you feel me? And uh, shit's been just moving yeah. much much harder. Yeah, we definitely we gonna definitely get to that bill, man, because I would ask you about. The digital distribution, because you was heavy on that before this even became even a thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, and I still be doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you, you was a part of that that vein of starting the digital distribution way before everybody thought they had to go do a major to get. Yeah, like you was already Just doing it. Doing independent, man. Cause man, you, you know, we can wait around. For shit to happen, but then shit ain't gonna happen. So we just gotta take shit into our own hands and make yes, shit sir. happen. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir, man. And it's been a while, man. Tell us what's been going on with you, man. Like what you've been up to since this last show. Man, who there's been a lot. Like like I was saying, I shut down the wise guys and, and started a pipeline, uh dropped a bunch of projects, man. Uh with me and uh, you know, I linked up with King Assassin and DJ Green Guy for these Eternal Thug Life projects, you know what I'm saying? Pushing the legacy of Machiavelli, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Doing that shit. And then um, also, uh, shit, I put out some records last year. I got the uh, West Coast Grind, the EP, and the Deluxe Edition album, mm. and the Hospital Takeover with me, Big Ski, and Urge 7. And we were basically ushering in the Pipeline Coalition on, on uh, those two albums, man, and just grinding, man, like, shit, man, on that West Coast grind, we had Yuck Mouth, uh, the homie Big Ski on there, you know what I'm saying, D Cherokee, formerly a death row, you know, uh, you know, the Holla At Me song with Pac, the girl singing on the Ooh. That's a not really feature right there. Yeah, 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 so she on there, she with the Pipeline and shit, she was with Wise Guys, you know what I'm saying? But she, so and she stayed with the with the transformation to the new, you know what I'm saying, to the new ship and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah, man. And why I got you on, man? Like, tell us about the new album, man, because you know you got a lot of surprises, man. Like a lot of surprise a listers on this project this time around. Yeah, man. So hey, it started like I said with with that West Coast grind. We had uh, Yuck Mouth on there, and then um and then on the uh, Hostile Takeover we had uh, Young Buck. King Crooked, 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, Constantine is on this motherfucker. And we got, uh, and then, yeah, the shit just kept on going. Now I got I got a, a maxi single out with two songs with Snoop. Mm-hmm. Uh, the maxi single is Let the World Know, which is the, the main single on there. And then the other single on there is uh, Cali Don't Play with Nephew Michael and Snoop. And that shit, that that's the one that's popping the most right now. And then uh, I just dropped that uh, Fancy Thangs with Too Short. And then on the 29th, I got another joint uh, dropping with um with Obi Trice and DJ Green Guy and shit. So, man, I, man, I've been pushing. And then, yeah, DJ Green Guy came through with a bunch of shit to hop on too, man. So I got a whole project with him that's coming out in January. The CD's already available right now. People can buy it on eBay. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But um yeah, that shit features Snoop, the game, Jada Kiss, Cameron, uh fucking uh Swifty McVeigh at D twelve, Jaron Bitten, and who else is on that thing, man? It's a bunch of bunch of artists, you know what I'm saying? So and DJ Green guy, I linked up with him through the homie DJ King Assassin. So we both we both uh two uh, Assassin's Disciples. So that's what the name of the project is too. Assassin's Disciples. Sir. Yes, sir. And I see the Snoop song is doing real good, like on the on the Spotify charts and yeah. independent they, rap they, charts in general. Yeah, they put that into uh, the This Is Snoop Dogg playlist, the official This Is Snoop Dogg playlist. Right now, if I pull that shit up on my uh, other phone here, let me see real quick. They got, got that shit. Uh, let me see here. This is Snoop Dogg. They got it. Right underneath Lay Low right now, if you see that shit. They got Cali Don't Play right underneath that one. And then uh, Let the World Know is also in there. And that's right there between Buckham and Vato. Yeah, people don't understand the importance. This is the importance of the playlist now. The playlist is basically the new way of getting your music out now. Yeah, yeah. And that playlist alone, man, like since I got up on there, I got. From that playlist, I got a total of 7,409 streams just being on that playlist. Mm. So, yeah, that shit, yeah, that shit moving. Yeah, when you get in them playlists, man, you you get a whole bunch of new followers. You get a bunch of listeners, you know what I'm saying, people coming in. And, that, yeah, man, it's, it, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? And on, on the real, man, doing that song with Snoop, you know what I'm saying? I got the verse from the producer, so uh, I ain't. You know, I ain't uh, linked up with Snoop in person, but I got the license for it and everything. I, you know, I sent it to DJ Pooh. I sent it to him and shit, you know. So, uh, you know, but the thing is, having that shit in there, man, that shit has been a true blessing. Because Snoop is the one, like, he's one of them cats that when I was younger, trying to, you know, learn how to rap and shit, um, man, that was one of the people. People that 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 uh, I looked up to, you know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, man, it was Ice T, Tupac, Snoop, and Be Real. Those four were my mentors, you know, as a, as a kid growing up, listening to to this shit. Yeah, man, everybody have their top fives, and it's it's crazy how people don't include Be Real in a lot of that stuff, man. Cause Be Real, man, he could really get down. Yeah, yeah, man, Be Real spit, man. And remember, man, Be Real and Cypress Hill, they, they even had a battle with Cube and came out. You know what I'm saying? Came out all right. Yeah. You know Cube, this is right the time Cube was in the career. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, exactly. They, 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 they survived that. That's right. Yeah, they, they survived that, man. But going into your journey, man, you know, tell people about where you're originally from and how you got in the rap, man. All right, man. And so I'm born in the Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? Half Mexican, half Swedish. Um, grew up all around the Bay because my, um, yeah, my mom. She was involved in some, street, you know, some, some in the dope game and shit. She passed away when I was ten. And uh, you know, coming up, I, I just, uh, you know, dealing with my pain and shit. Rap became the thing, you know, the my therapy to do that. You know what I'm saying? Writing lyrics and and doing this shit, and 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 it gave me an outlet to, you know, to deal with that pain and shit. You feel me? So yeah, yeah, and then yeah, shit, man. I started taking it serious when I was like, well, maybe in my, my like late teens and shit, and started sending off demos and all that type of shit. And then finally, when I was uh, around, uh, uh, what was I in my in my early twenties? I linked up with DJ King Assassin 
and uh, Mike Mosley and Steady Mobbing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they brought me in. That's how I linked up with Gonzo, rest in peace. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, man. Yeah. All that's the key is about networking. You being out in the West and everything, it's all about power behind the network. Yeah. Yeah. That part right there. That part. Networking, grinding, you know, investment, you know, and believe, you know what I'm saying? Dream, believe, and achieve. That's my motto right there, man. You can do anything you put your mind to. You just got to believe in it and be willing to work for it. And what kept you, you like, keeping this thing going forward to this point where you at now? Because I know being a part of this game, man, it could be demoralizing. There could be times you just been like, man, I just want to just give this whole thing up. I want to hang it up because sometimes you, 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 you're dealing with the business. You're dealing with the politics. Yeah. And that leaves a big stank on it. Like, how do you, man, what keeps you pushing and going forward? Man, hip hop, man. Rap is something I love to do, and hip hop is what I live. You feel me? Mm. So, yeah, man, I, I can't leave that shit alone. That shit is, man, if, if, if I would stop rapping or stop writing, man, my mind gonna go all crazy and shit, man. I need that shit, man. You know, that's my therapy. So, yeah, I can have one it. record, or I can have one stream, or zero, or a fucking a million. I'm gonna still do this shit. Yeah, because this thing gotta be in your blood, man. It's kind of even like what we do when we interview artists like you guys. Like you guys keep this wheel going. Cause there've been days I've been like, man, look, I feel like just pulling a Michael Jordan and just hanging this thing up, man. I'm just like, I'll hit my final shot and I'm fading away. Yeah, but when you when I hear projects from you guys and you guys keeping this culture coming forward, I'm like, man, I got to come off the bench, man. There's still more. Co- there's still more stories to cover. Yeah, yeah, for real, man. And we we still doing it. You know what I mean? And and you know, you know, everything in rap ain't the mainstream. There's a lot of good shit in the underground, and we keep it popping here. You know what I mean? Yeah, we got to let them know that hip hop lives in the underground it's still there there's real quality music there it's just not promoted the right, right way you gotta pretty much dig more you know what i mean yeah yeah for real me and um me and the homie dope fresh to don and um and uh, uh supreme Ra, we did a song back in 2018 called love for hip-hop and and that's how my shit my verse starts is you know um hip-hop's Still lives, but the un- but you know hip hop still lives in the underground, but the industry is whack. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit is real, man. The, the 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 mainstream is just yeah, it is what it is. You know, what's youngsters doing what they do, so I'm not gonna hate on it. You know what I'm saying? And right now, I'm pushing business, man. So yeah, I'm gonna keep now I'm getting your, now you getting your foot wet into the game. You networking with these people. How was you able? to learn the business side because the business side could sometimes mix with your creativity yeah how was you able to handle the business side to where it didn't blend into that creativity man i just i learned a lot coming up and for for a long time i did i really didn't want to partake in the business side but when i was on one hood havoc he was teaching me a lot of the business side and he was ha- having me handle a lot of the business side on one hood and as i did that I just learned how to run a label and and the shit stuck with me, man. So shout out to Havoc the Rhyme Son. You know what I'm saying for that. Yeah. And you learning how to run your own ship. Care to tell the people the challenges of running that ship? Because people love, they think, oh, I signed these orders. I can sign them blank checks. I can kick my feet in and watch them work. And then when the record gets finished, we can just put it to the store. It's more to it than that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got to have a, a whole strategy, a whole marketing strategy, man. You know, anybody can drop an album tomorrow. But the thing is, you want to get people to listen to that shit, too. So, you know, you got to learn the formula and what formula works for you and stuff like that. So it's all about planning, strategizing, making the right moves. And, uh, you know, an investment. You got to invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, ain't shit going to happen. You got to, you know, you got to 
put your money with your, where your mouth is, bro. You know what I mean? And that's what it is, man. Now, you discovering talent and looking for talent. Like, what's the first thing that you look for before signing an act? How serious they are about themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I check out, you know, I check out, you know, their following, check out how they promote, check out, you know what I'm saying, what they doing, the, the quality of music they got, you know what I'm saying, all that type of stuff. And, but my business model is a little, di a little bit different. I just don't sign artists. Uh, I have more of um, the CD baby approach where people can buy digital distribution from me. But because I'm putting my brand on it, I still do the listening. I still do that part. So I just don't put anybody out. You know what I'm saying? But people that yeah. want to check, you know, check into what kind of digital distribution uh, deals we offer, you know, they can go check out pipelinecoalition.blogspot.com. You know what I'm saying? And we got it right there. We help people uh, put their albums out. They they basically come with a with a budget, and we work with most budgets. So we have shit that's affordable. So it's not like you know people gotta spend a whole lot. But we got something like somebody want to drop like let's say they want to drop an album, man. Um, for for about forty bucks, they can get their album put out, and then they get the most of the percentage. Depending, we have a few different distribution companies that we go with. We have Empire. We have Symphonic, and then we have Amuse. Now, Amuse, anybody can get on, and you get 100% of your royalties from there. And now when it comes to the Empire and the Symphonic, then there's, you know, um, there's some percentages that get taken. Uh, but with that, Symphonic and Empire both do work where, you know, they help promote the record and all that type of shit. But also that 40 bucks that people spend, that that's the basic package right there. 40 bucks is the basic package for an album. And for that, uh, they basically, they get a little, you know, team that's helping push their records. So when their, their, their little album drops and stuff or single drops or whatever it is, some of that, you know, it, it goes to, to some of the, um, like, for example, uh, radio stations. Online radio stations, like for example, you guys got like um, a fee to get it on on off the cuff for uh, for the music musicians and stuff, right? You guys got that little package, so we might take some of that, invest in that package, so that artist gets some radio play with y'all. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's that's what it is. Basically, when they put that forty, it's not really just going to me. Only a small portion is going to keep our website running, keep our label going. The rest of that is going into promo. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and depending on how much people want to, you know, how much bread they want to break, you know, if they have bigger budgets, we can get them into a whole, you know, a whole bunch of different radio stations and podcasts and shit like that. And then their album is going to start moving. And also we'll help strategize. So like, let's say somebody's putting out an album. I always say drop two or three singles first before the album. And I'll help out with that along the way, and they'll get guidance and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, everybody have different strategies because it used to be drop. It used to be this strategy here. They used to drop one street single, one single for commercial play, and if the album do real good, they'll probably drop an album cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and some people just want to drop singles too. So we have packages for that too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To get singles out. So, but yeah, I always check out like how hard is someone is willing to go. And also, when somebody does like, let's say, put out their album with us, then they also got a chance to be on our compilations. We like this year we put out the Ryan Files and Testimonies compilation has all of our artists and including uh, Crooked Eyes on there. Badass is on a song with Lil Ratchet. Rest in peace, Badass. So, you know, they get a chance to be on these records. And then when these when these compilations drop, I also keep my eye on who's promoting, who's pushing, you know what I'm saying? And because, uh, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So you want to make sure that you have, you know, strong links in your ship. So, yeah, that's so. So I pay attention to all that. So when when uh the next compilation comes out we uh we make sure all of those who are serious about their craft stay you know what i'm saying absolutely absolutely because it what it is it weeds out people who are serious about their career because 
when you're getting into this, it's more so, I would say, 70% business and 30% music. Yep. It's a lot of business, man. Man, I got songs I'm sitting on right now I just want to put out, but I'm not going to do it because, not not yet. I'm going to do it later when the time comes because everything is about timing, strategizing, and all that. So right now, my, my um, next year's release down my road right here is is uh already finished it's only a seven track album but on this album we got snoop dogg and we got two short featured on there i got bronze nazareth the wu-tang and my homie california breeze out of compton he's on here too so uh yeah it's it's, it's a banging cd it's available on ebay but i'm dropping this next year on like uh streaming and that right there is my new strategy by the way uh or one of my new strategies is instead of just dropping it straight to uh spotify and all that stuff i'm i'm uh putting out cds and trying to bring back cds again man because yeah. uh you look at these streaming companies man like you, you hear about what snoop said the other day getting a billion streams and he he barely got 45k yeah 45k yeah. some good money but for a billion streams man that's crumbs you know what i'm saying he shouldn't have no 45k for a billion streams that should be should be Man, at least a mill, a couple mill right there. For real, for real. What are these streaming companies really like robbing us, man? So, so I want to make CDs pop again. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, man. Everybody getting. I think the whole world right now is becoming one big 360 deal, man. Because you even seen this in the Hollywood world with Tawaji B. Hanson. She was crying about she ain't getting no money off this acting thing. Yeah, yeah, man. Because. Everybody can stream. Like streaming really messed up the game on the on on both sides of entertainment, whether it's movies or or music. You know what I'm saying? It, it really did. So, you know. But hey, at the same time, streaming allows us to to reach out to places we may not have reached out to otherwise. You know what I'm saying? So there's good and bad. It's you know in, in that whole thing. So I don't hate streaming. If I did, I wouldn't have nothing up on Spotify. You feel me? But and I even got stuff on SoundCloud, and I don't even get paid for SoundCloud. I just put that up there because I want my fans to be able to have some stuff. Sometimes I put some exclusive shit on there. You feel me? So yeah, sometimes you got to take advantage of the platforms that's out there because you never know who can discover you on that. Exactly, exactly, man. And then uh, I'm working on this compilation, man, for next year, man. I'm like, I think I'm five or six tracks deep in it. I got the game on there. I got uh. KRS One, Kuji oh. Rap, uh, fucking Capadonna, Wu Tang, Snoop, and and uh, yeah, those are yeah. So I got those, and and then yeah, I got um from my own label. I got Split Personality on there. I got Nephew Michael. I got um Urge Seven, Rock Box, Dope Fresh to Don, and uh, who else I got on there right now? Big Ski. Yeah, so so though yeah, we got five tracks ready right now. I'm gonna do another five. It's just gonna be a ten track compilation. You know what people's attention spans these days? Instead of doing a twenty track album, now we, we we cutting it down to ten, possibly twelve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because sometimes you gotta you gotta you gotta test the room and see how the people gonna respond to it because even. I I put a tape together. I got a tape together called Dope Dope Bean or something like that. We put that together um months ago. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not putting this on no streaming site because I'm probably gonna get what three cents and they gonna make millions. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hit the consumer by email. It's cat. We can do rate of exchange. Mm hmm. Send me the cash app or hit the PayPal. I'll send you the tape. Yeah. I get paid. You go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That part. Cause I was like, dang, I'm sitting on all these songs. I'm like, I'm sitting on literally like probably like 40 songs. I know the average listener ain't gonna digest all that, so I'm like, okay, let me go ahead and just put 15 on the bad boy, 15 to 16. Yeah. But I study how Dre did it with the Chronic. I study how he did. Yeah. It. Hey, every word, one of them songs matter. Exactly. By the way, there's one song in particular, man, that the world waiting for, especially me, man. Maybe the world don't know all about it yet but you know oh, what yeah. i'm talking about yeah oh yeah the we long on cypher man i'm yeah. waiting on it man I'm, I'm i'm ready to put the finishing touches to it and get that we need to get some artwork we're gonna get some uh get it mixed down 
I'm ready, man. I already got the, I already did the intro to it. I'm gonna send that to uh King, yeah. and I'm like, look, man, let's get this thing out here, man. The people want to hear it. Yeah, 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 man. That's gonna be dope, man. We got, we got Tretch Ooh. on there, Sibo, EDI from the Outlaws, uh, Ice T, uh, Cocaine, fucking above the law. Who else on there? Man? Yeah. Got my man, um, dope. I think Dope Fresh gonna do one. I got on um, Coney Brooks, LR the Sandman. I got my man Comet from Screwball. Yeah, I, we're trying to get a lot of people, man. Yeah, it's just a matter of just getting um everything mixed down. And sometimes I'll be telling people, man, like, look, this is an opportunity. Yeah, hell yeah, it is, man. I I, I come in right after Tretch, and I was like. Shit, I gotta I better step my bars <laughs> on this thing. I'm coming in after Tritch. Shit, yeah. man. That was that was dope, man. Cause uh that's another cat that I listened to when I was a youngster. Now I got a song with him, man. It's it's a trip, man. That that's one thing too that keeps me going. When you was asking me how I can keep going all these years, even though there's a bunch yeah. of fuckery in this business, man. And there is a lot of fuckery, man. I mean, I've seen people come and go. I've had People that I thought was my homies and shit turn on me and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I seen I seen the bullshit in this game. You know what I'm saying? But I still keep it going because you know at the end of the day, I'm building my, my legacy. So when I'm gone, I can you know be smiling down from above, looking down on man. I did that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was able yeah, to do that because you're making the music. Yeah, you're making the music the legacy. Yeah. So because people need music like they need clothes you know what i'm saying like they need food yeah. that's the part of the three three pillars of life yeah yeah man. food man shelter and music four four pillars of life yeah mm. Cause, that's right yeah cause music is the only thing cause, yeah cause music could take people to a, to a time machine <laughs> it could take people to a time machine that part man it takes People do a time machine or what you're doing, and it puts you in a certain trance, a certain mood, and sometimes it can brighten your spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real, real man. Because all this crazy yeah. stuff happened in this world, man. We need good music. Mm -hmm. And we need good music at the end of the day because that was brightening everybody's energy. Yeah, man. For real. It's a, a lot of these man. guys. Huh? And it, it's, it's kind of bad now because a lot of them putting out trash, and none of them, and it ain't really, um, Motivate nobody. Nah, for real, man. There's a lot of trash out, but <laughs> you, know, you know what Havoc told me when I was on One Hood, man? He used to tell me, he said, Look, don't worry about what everybody else is doing, man. Just focus on you because they don't give a fuck about what you're doing. So just focus on what you're doing and you're going to make, make everything happen that you need to. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Spot of Beauty, how you doing? Much love to you. Yeah, man, we got a we got a lot of beauty. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of people tuning in. I gotta do things the organic way because you know what I'm saying they be playing with my numbers. Yeah. Like this thing will usually show about twenty two or thirty two, but then they cut it down to two. You see how they mess with me, you know what I mean? But look, you can't you can't they can't resonate good content. At the end of the day, they can't shut down good content. That's all good. Hey, do you uh save this too and keep it posted for later? Absolutely. That's yeah, we can, we can save that, put that on the YouTube channel, man, because you know we about to hit ninety five k, and we about to um uh, get that get that out there because we know we pushing that line. We trying to get to a hundred k. Hey, that's what's. Uh, hey, you want to edit down that uh Snoop music video into the YouTube version? I'll send it to you if you want me to. Hey. Man, let's make that happen, man. Cause yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll send you the Cali Don't Play with me, nephew Michael, and Snoop Dogg, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we do, man. We collab. We collab with the dopest brands. We keeping the underground alive, man. Yeah. And you made a point going back. We was talking about with the CDs, man. Cause the CDs is what's needed. Yeah. The CDs and cassettes. Yeah. That's why. Hey, and they been moving on on eBay, man. So everybody out there tuning in, if you want some dope music, man, some some dope West Coast music right now. You can cop Mr. Loco Down My Road. That's my new album featuring Snoop Dogg, Bronze Nazareth, The Wu Tang, and Too Short. Oh, and California Breeze. And also my West Coast Grind Deluxe Edition that features Big Ski, 
Yuck Mouth, Project Pat, Earth mm. Seven, uh, Young Buck. Uh, I say Yuck Mouth, I think, and then D Cherokee. D Cherokee was the one from my at me on, on uh, you know, All Eyes on Me with Pop. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, she got a good ass voice. She been she been fucking with me since uh since the WGG days, man. Rockbox brought her to the team. Hey, it, it's a trick, man. Nephew Michael and Rockbox, they the one man, together. We we built this shit. They uh, nephew Michael introduced me to Rockbox, and Rockbox introduced me to Urge Seven. We partnered up, and we got that this whole West Coast shit going on. And then you know we got the overseas. These cats as well, rapology, fucking uh, split personality out of Sweden. We got, you know what I'm saying, people all over connected to this movement, man. It's, it's the same movement almost. It's just a few people we had to cut off and we changed the name because I started the old click WGG with, with somebody. And, uh, you know, things just, you know, I had to let him go on his own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so you got any um live shows in coming? Right now, I ain't had a live show in a minute. Um, but you know, anybody trying to book me, I'm 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 down. So just holla at me. My last live show was a few months ago. I did a little little something for a nonprofit man and uh, for uh, autism awareness. I did a little show for them. So yeah, but uh, yeah, right now yeah, nothing. About, right now, yeah, it's about. Yeah, man, it's about that's where you, where you get your money, though, man. At the end of the day, when you get that live performance, because even with these labels, they trying to cut in yeah. that. Yep, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like this is brutal out here, man. Like people don't understand what content creators are going through now, because they even we, me and you, we always building off other things too. We pay attention on how even the government ain't even trying to protect artists anymore. They trying to take from us. Everybody want to take from the artist, man. So you got and what people don't know, and what people don't know, even though he's public enemy number one to the world, Trump try to fight for the artist. Shit, that, that's true though. That's true though. Motherfuckers don't want to hear that, but that's true. He signed a bill that was we were supposed to make more money off of streaming, and then Spotify and Apple, I think it was, teamed up together, put in a whole bunch of millions, hundreds of millions to to fight it. Cause they don't want to pay. They could pay a hundred, hundreds of millions to fight paying the artists their proper pay. Let that sink in. That's crazy, man. Yeah, cause I was like, man, I was getting checks. Yeah. <laughs> Around that time period, but then afterwards, and the government pretty, really, pretty much went ahead and you know seized the right to control. We ain't getting none. Yeah. <laughs> we starving. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. So that's what. And I'm in, and currently they could like they could monet, they could they could demonetize you, kick you off, and then make money off you. That's what I'm currently dealing with right now. Man, that sucks, man. Yeah. Yeah, they you know, y'all treat me like I'm like, dang, y'all treat me like a three a rap on the three sixty. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, I, I seen that happen too to uh to to some more, more cats that do like, you know, hip hop news and, and you know yeah. podcasts and stuff, man. They I always wanna fuck with people, man. I don't it's like they have their little select few elites that they allow, and then the rest of us, man, man, it's a battle. It's a battle for the real ones, man. Yeah, that's Unless why you bring these CDs back, man. Bring all this physical shit back. You know what I'm saying? And we can, you know, at least on the music side, people can start purchasing and owning the CDs and the projects. You know what I'm saying? Or flash drives or whatever if people don't want to go back to listen to the cds man you can you know people can pay for digital downloads you know what i'm saying but start you know start doing and that most and most importantly buy the merch man the, the merch, merch is what part what feeds us yeah like y'all i y'all see me i got the mad man entertainment snapback big shout out to my man comet 5000 you can yeah. follow him and get you one got screwball t right here that's my team from the east coast we on live every Saturday night. We couldn't do shows for two weeks because of blog talk, but we'll be back. Put it that way. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back. Yeah, we ain't, we just taking a little vacation, man, before we really hit y'all upside the head. Yeah. That part, man. Yeah, and um, I got a, I got some merch right here, man. It's called Mr. Loco's Good Vibes, man. 
Let me see. I got a little sticker on a plaque right here. There, good vibes. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? That, that's my hemp brand. So we got, you know, uh, I took that over from uh, from a partner of mine. He uh, named DJ Derek B. He started this uh, this this brand. He had uh, CBD infused energy drinks, um, a sleep aid. It looks like a little cough syrup thing, but it's it's, it's CBD infused and it's for people, you know, at nighttime and shit like that. And man, that shit's hella potent. And we got, uh, you know, we got the flower, you know what I mean? I got this one smoke shop over here that's uh, that's that's moving in now, too. And I'm about to get it into a few other smoke shops in my area. So, yeah, doing all legit, you know what I'm saying? Not just not just moving tree on the block or nothing, but doing it legit, you feel me? So, so I, yeah. How's, it, how's everything moving up there in California right now, man? Is the inflation kicking y'all in the ass like I did out here? Man. Man, that's why we gotta have hella hustles, man. <laughs> Straight up, man. Yeah, man. It's a nonstop grind because, yeah, like man, life is not cheap. You know what I'm saying? Cause cost like, of living, out, bitch. Something else, man. Even even one bedroom apartments. Shit, man. I seen. I heard somebody get a one bedroom. <clears throat> and um, I think they said in Oakland, and it was running them almost two G's. Yeah, one bedroom. <sighs> Fucking insane. And I, man, one bedroom used to be four. One bedroom used to be four hundred back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah. Yo, in San Francisco, you get a bed, not a room, not not. Not not a uh, apartment, not a room, a bed for a fucking G. That's criminal, man. That is criminal, bro. And both San Francisco and Oakland right now, those those cities. Hey, much love to my people from San Francisco and Oakland. So I'm not knocking your cities, but them cities got towed up from the flow now, man. For real, like like people. Man, that's people the man, my my. Uh, uh, wife's auntie. She woke up today at Christmas Eve. She go outside and she live in Oakland. She go outside. All four of her fucking wheels or tires are taken off her car. And there's a stone like, you know, like some big stone boulder like underneath the car that's holding it up. Motherfucker just took all four wheels straight from her driveway, bruh. Like Gotham City out here in these streets, man. Fuck up, man. Man, I've and been the scary part is, and the scary part is, there ain't no Batman out this bitch. Nah, you just gotta keep your heater on you everywhere, man. Shit, Shit. ain't no John Wick out this bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, I'm like, it's, it's really like Gotham City, man. For real, bro. This shit is nuts, man. I saw that picture this morning. I was like, damn, what a way to celebrate Christmas Eve, man. Shit. Now, now over there, and you over there, don't they have it to where people could just go in and just shoplift and just walk out? Yeah, they decriminalize that shit like under a thousand dollars. People can steal when they can't do shit. Yo, cause it made, cause back then, growing up, man, we got scared even get stealing and getting caught. We probably do a hundred years in jail. Yeah, I never thought I'd see it where you could just walk in, and just take some, and nobody say nothing. Yeah. And now they trying even uh what's it called Gavin Newsom he trying uh, to fucking pass some law where shop owners won't be able to fight back like if they if they pull a gun or, or you know or shoot somebody trying to uh rob their store then they then the owner can be in the wrong. You know, Yo, that's crazy. I'm like man, man, some shit, man. I ain't on no side on the political aisle, man. But this progressive shit, that's that that that's what they call it. That's progressive shit is not progressive for shit. Man. That shit is really fucking shit put, up, man. You putting that you put you putting the American citizens as prisoners in their own community now. In their own community, yeah. And then people are gonna you know, like California, they try to do everything to make it like impossible to carry a gun legally out this motherfucker. So it gets to a point where somebody's like, oh, well, what do you value more, your life or uh, your freedom? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Yo, 
And it's wild, man, because he been... And carry. Or fucking be a victim out here, man. If anything in the South, man, where I'm at, man, they let you carry. <laughs> Straight yeah. up. Yeah. That's crazy, yo, over here, bro. California is, is ass backwards, man. If if my governor Gavin Newsom ever runs for president, don't vote for him. Don't let them fool you. This motherfucker is 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 a poison. Straight. Man, I think honestly, I think honestly, both sides of the coin is pretty much compromised, man. Oh yeah. I you heard the term uni party? They say nowadays, like because yeah, if you look at it, it makes sense, man. Because through all the years, from from the, the Reagan era, the Bush era, Clinton era, uh, Bush again, Obama, and so forth, right? Like, if you, if you look at shit, they've been following the design. Wars, wars for oil, right? Going into everybody's business, trying to secure this one world government shit. Now, people can call that conspiracy theory if they want to, but hey, then they're just putting, you know, blinds in front of their eyes. Because if you look at it, there's this design been going on. Ain't shit changed. You know, because there's one, you know, they say there's two parties, but it's really one uni party. And they all controlled by the super PACs, the people that's putting in this money and that's investing. So, you know. You know what? That's why. You know, huh? The crazy part is, is this, though, man. They all fight together. But when it comes to a common cause, they come together. Yeah. When it comes to maintaining their own power, yeah. they're going to come together. They will. <laughs> and when it comes to sending our money to other countries, <laughs> they come together. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to a war, oh, then forget about it. Yeah, man. But then, meanwhile, we got people starving in our own neighborhoods. We got gangs gang banging against each other, killing each other every day. Youngsters, you know what I'm saying? We got our own problems in our own backyard. They don't give a fuck about that shit. You know what's crazy is people say that gang violence was bad in the '90s, but I think it's worse now because you don't really have really no body to really set jurisdictions or rules. You can go out. Here here to the hood right now, the biggest OG in the block is 13 years old. They checking in with him. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Yo, the, oh, the biggest, he, he, I'm like, yo, he running the block and he's 13 years old. We checking in with him. Man, that's what usually when they get jumped in, though. <laughs> yo, <laughs> you know, they like, like, they want their stripes, so they go, they going to do what they, you know, everything they, they, they can to get their stripes. Mm -hmm. They send it to about, yeah, man, it's, a, it's, a, it's the dude named um, Big Homie Cheese. You got to check in with him. I'm like, okay. You think it's somebody swole, like somebody like Tukey Williams or something. Yeah. And a little, little Uzi Vert looking dudes, man. You're going to see, hey, remember um, Belly, that little youngster right there? <laughs> Nas gave the chain to. Yeah, he running the block. Yeah, he running the block. <laughs> <laughs> He running the block now. Now the little Uzi Burt dudes running the block now. I'm like, hold up. I'm checking in with this dude with green hair. <laughs> what the heck? Hey, you and better he, watch what you do around him too, because they might snitch and think it's okay. <laughs> like these dudes yeah. like this, we you know what I'm saying? We'll give a wedgie back. back then. Yeah. Now they running the shit. They running the hoods, and I'm like, yo, that's the problem right there. They run it. You got people, the blind leading the blind, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was a uh, quite a bit of shit that was happening. My my area uh, was kind of active during the summer. We got we got some shit over here where I live and stuff. And it was a uh, it was a uh, this shootout between a sixteen and a seventeen year old. Oh, it's like the street down from me and shit. Yeah, man, the sixteen year old got popped in the head. The seventeen year old got hit in the shoulder. And yeah, it was a shootout. It got so grimy, man. I seen stick up the stick up kid get stick up. <laughs> the stick up kid get robbed. <laughs> hey man. Like even the criminals are getting taxed, man. This is this is what's crazy going on right now. Yeah. Like everything is everything in this universe is being dissolved, man. You can see even see it within the entertainment and social media and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Entertainment is getting dissolved, man. Mm. And then you know what though the way things is going i'm gonna make a good joke here you might mess around you might sign puff to a deal but at this rate the way he going <laughs> now nah, you know what i <laughs> he's bad for the brand <laughs> <laughs> oh 
I'm like, hold up, you go shine hey, the shiny I got put on my man. Fox fam, so, you know, bad boy, <laughs> puffy, all that shit. Yo. You know, I don't care if people see me say this on Instagram Live. It's, it ain't no secret. I don't fuck with bad boy. I don't fuck with puffy. None of them, you know what I'm saying? And it ain't because, you know, what happened. But, hey, fuck it, man. I got put on by Pox fam, and I got respect for that family. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, man. Son, you know what I'm saying? Let him get his no, foot. Get let, him go do, let him go. Matter of fact, man, let him go get a cheesecake yeah. for you. Cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to go get some cheesecakes and shit. Yeah. And, and, uh, matter of fact, you got to double his down. touching that man with dudes sniffing down his neck and shit like that. <laughs> let him get this. Let what him get. Let him walk. No, like 50 cent. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I say this. Let him walk from cop up to walk the cop to get a cheesecake. Right. And a shiny suit. Yeah. And a shiny suit. <laughs> All up yeah, in the man, it's just yeah. crazy. It's just it's just crazy how this thing is is dis is dissolving itself, man. That's why I say 24, 24, the industry is re-cleansing itself. Like all them gatekeepers and all that shit, they're gonna be out the door, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, man. Yeah, man. Fuck the gatekeepers. We're going to take what, you know, take what we deserve. You know what I'm saying? Take what's ours. Absolutely. Fuck, wait. Give it to us. We're going to take it. Uh, Hold on. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm on the radio right now. Yeah. Yeah, All we right. build it right now, man. Cause yeah, it's, it's at the end of the day because things is opening back up for the independents to really take theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Korean Blitz, salute, man. Hey, what's, one what's of the up, best man? YouTubers salute. out in the game, man. Salute, salute. Yeah, man. man it's, it's good being back with you, though, man, Eric. Yeah, man. Off the cut. They've been messing with me, man. They've been, they've, been trying to, they've been trying to hold me down, bro. They've been trying to demon they demonetize the channel. They try to mess with my views, but the people still subscribing. They funded the war. I'm still in it. I'm still in it, man. I made a we made about about a hundred K subscribers. We're not selling out no corporation Huh? You ever try to get on Rumble? We what? might have to get up there too. I'm trying to get my our content everywhere. Yeah, or uh, Twitch. You check check them out. I'm going up there too. I'm gonna be everywhere. Yeah. Even I might go back to MySpace. Shit. Hey, I, I, don't I still got my MySpace account somewhere, man. I, I never shut it down. Man, look, the way things is going, we owe Tom an apology. <laughs> For real. Yeah, we owe you an apology, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't mean to leave you like that for for uh, Mark Zuckerberg, punk ass. We didn't mean it like that. We If we knew it was that bad, we would have stayed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, my wife, my wife the one who got me on Facebook. For the longest, I didn't even want to get on Facebook back in the day. Like, I was on MySpace until probably like 2009 or some shit. MySpace was the shit. People don't understand. Was. MySpace was the play. And it's time and it's prime. Yeah. Facebook came in, and I think Facebook had, had a lot of advantages at the time because my. My what my what killing me with MySpace. MySpace used to take so long to load up music and load up your page. Yeah, <laughs> but it was hella good. Like that's uh, that's how I I network with a lot of artists and shit back then. My MySpace and SoundClick, man. I, I I ended up meeting uh, DJ King Assassin on um, SoundClick along with DJ Pimp, and then after that, Gonzo. I think I met through, uh, on on um, MySpace, but yeah, he was already connected with DJ Pimp as well and Assassin. But yeah, man, that's man, that's a, that that was some days, man. Yeah, man, it was less censorship, man. I, people don't understand the old YouTube days. Yeah, the old YouTube, yeah, it was like the Wild Wild West. I wish I had an account then. It was like you could say anything. Yeah, those the it used to be wild. Especially those, uh, anybody would know those old Alex Jones shows used to be up there. Yeah. Yo, that'd be crazy. They brought them back on X. 
Motherfuckers, <laughs> the brains are melting from that yeah. shit. I'm like, you know, and the crazy thing is, man, motherfuckers want to talk shit about Alex Jones, but this motherfucker was right about 99% of the shit he said. Like, yo, they brought this dude back, man. I'm like, oh, man, Twitter about to be cracking. That's why I got my, that's why I got my Twitter back, man. Because I'm like, man, they bringing all the, in, all the insane misfits back. <laughs> yep. Hey, I, I love that shit, man. Man, I, I'm on bring it. They're going to bring your man's on. I think they brought your man's back. They brought Kanye back. Oh, oh for real? I think he back. I didn't know that. Yeah. Man, I didn't know that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they bring a lot of people back, man. They they believe in free speech. It's just crazy that today that we got to, like, fight for free speech again because, like, like you see a lot, a lot of motherfuckers nowadays that'll be, like, like they be talking shit about free speech, but back in... Back in the '90s and '80s, man, rappers was was you know out there really fighting for that shit. Because people wanted to, people were stomping on their CDs. They want to ban rap music and all that shit back in the day. Remember that shit? Yeah, and now oh, yeah man. Point where if you say something that that just don't fall in line with somebody's agenda or whatever, they want to censor you. I mean, <laughs> like what the fuck? You know what I miss though? I miss when rap used to be scary. Yeah. I mean, man, when rap used to be scary to the to the mainstream, so to speak. Yeah. That's when we were making the best music. As soon as the mainstream got comfortable, you know what I mean? You got the Paris Hilton's coming around to the parties and shit. That's where it got watered down. Yeah. You start seeing the rich kids all of a sudden bobbing, and you like, that's good for the artists because the artists get to get paid, bro. That's kind of watering down the art. You know what I mean? Real, though. Yeah. Man. Man. The good old days, man. I remember, uh, you know, Ice T and NWA back in the day. You know how hard they, they went, man. When 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 NWA said "fuck the police," man, yeah. that shocked motherfuckers back then. You know what I'm saying? And they wasn't ready for that shit. I Ice T came out with you know body count and cop killer. Hell yeah! You know, I remember when Two Live Crew ended up in jail because they did their nasty as they want to be. Uh, you know, tour and shit somewhere. They ended up getting locked up in jail, and then they came out with the record band in the USA that was all talking about, you know, freedom of speech. That yeah, man, you know, shit. They got let out of jail afterwards because they were that was a freedom of speech case. I think the difference is the artists today and the artists back then. With the artists back then, they knew how to defend the art. Yeah, right. You could you could book Ice T for an interview. Ice T was a very intelligent individual, so therefore he could give you. Homie, right there. Mm -hmm. Been supportive. Yeah. He always supported us, man. Big salute yeah. to Ice T, man, for real. Yeah, real solid. Ice T, for real. Yeah, you book those guys for interviews, they could defend their art. I'm talking about Cube, Easy, and all them, Pot, yeah. all them. These guys today, I cringe, bro. Yeah, me like, too, bro. If they book, and I ain't, got no, you know, I ain't got no beef with them, but if they put Sexy Red, in front of Gail King, I'm gonna cringe, bro. Right. Like I'm gonna be like nervous, because <laughs> you know they're gonna ask her questions about her art, and she gonna and nine out of ten, they're representing hip hop. Yeah. So they're gonna go on these platforms. And I'm gonna be like, please don't, 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 don't bring Sukiyana up there. Please don't. <laughs> don't bring none of these people. Don't bring Doja Cat up there either. Don't bring none of them. <laughs> <laughs> chick's crazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, for real. <laughs> well, yeah, man, but we definitely pushing that line going into 2024, man. I'm probably about to have to wrong. I'll probably wrap this up because I don't know when it's gonna um cut off on me, but we're gonna leave on a good note. Tell people where they can find you. Okay, hey, you can find me on Instagram at Loke the Smoke X or formerly Twitter, Loke the Smoke, L O C D A Smoke. You know, I'm on uh, Facebook, Mr. Loco, a.k.a. Loke to Smoke, the fan page. You can follow that. You know what I'm saying? We got, I got uh, Loke to Smoke dot blogspot dot com. My label, Pipeline Coalition dot blogspot dot com. You know what I'm saying? We there. Um, man, you know, and then the music is everywhere. Digital music is sold and streamed. My latest albums, Assassin's Disciple and down my road are available only on CD right now. You can get them on eBay. I'm also working on getting an Amazon store, so you're gonna be able to get them there soon too. And then, uh, man, you know, everywhere, bro. 
So no doubt. No doubt, man. Big salute to you. Big salute to you joining us, man. Big shout out to everybody that tuned in. I'm going to have the interview up on YouTube. And be sure to send me that video, man. I'm going to put it on the channel, too. I'm going to do that, man. I'm going to do that. And before I leave, too, let me give a big shout out to my Pipeline Coalition. You know what I'm saying? Those who stood by my side when it really counted. You know what I mean? I love y'all. You know who you are. There's a whole lot of y'all. Rock Box, Nephew Michael, Big Ski. Urge seven, split personality, rapology, dope fresh to dime. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, double G, man. The list goes on and on and on. You know. Anyway, much love and much love to all the fans that's tuning in. We hit almost two million streams this year. I appreciate y'all. I couldn't do that without y'all. You know what I'm saying? And we got a whole lot more shit coming for next year. So stay tuned. It's going down, y'all. All right. So you now you on that note, I'm about to be up out of here. We're gonna probably be back on Off the Cuff Radio this week. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right, peace.